Now I'm over on the Walker Turner drill press. I've drilled three of the holes. I'm still using the parallels. We've got a quarter inch bit. So I don't know if I'm going to be in the way of the camera here, but just, uh, just drilling them right through, letting it float again to follow that pilot hole that you drilled, or I drilled. So easy as you break through on any hole. Got two more to drill. If you don't already have one, make yourself up a little uh, deburring tool like this, just a countersink and a handle. You can buy them commercially too, but that's the way I like to treat all of my holes. Just a couple twists on both sides. It takes all those burrs off. I like that better than a file. And then see the caps. These are clearance holes. These are the quarter inch clearance holes. So in a minute I'm going to show you how to transfer these onto the cylinder and we drill them out and tap them. So that's what it looks like and they're nicely spaced. I think I got it pretty accurate. I think you all know what transfer punches are. If you don't have a set, get a set. Uh, they're only 20 bucks or so. They're going to be Chinese, but they're going to be serviceable. So we're going to use the quarter inch transfer punch. And I made a witness mark here so that I always assemble it exactly like that. And I'm, I'll make a little file mark on there or center punch marks rather than the magic marker. But we just take the transfer punch and put it in any hole and Strike it with your hammer and go right on around and mark all the holes. Or what I do sometimes just to make sure it doesn't slip is to, uh, now I'll use a regular center punch. Center punch those a little deeper. I'll use the uh, uh, pilot hole system like I just used a minute ago. And then I'm going to drill them 13 64 so tap them quarter 20. Or I might, no, I got fine thread, so I'm going to have to change that size. But uh, that way it's held in place by one bolt. And then you go ahead and transfer the other ones. Always to put the possibility of that uh, turning a little bit on you. And that can't happen once you've got at least one screw in there. Now one other thing is I oriented these holes such that one would not be in line with uh, uh, <clears throat> where our valving is going to be just in case that hole would interfere with something. That's why I am uh, like I am there and the appearance will be good too I think. I drilled and tapped one hole. I went in there with the uh, quarter 28 taper tap and then I changed taps and went in with a plug tap I drilled it deep enough so I don't have to deal with a bottoming tap, which is always a chance of breaking it off. Used a little bit of this. You don't want to break a tap at this point of the game. Aluminum, yeah, you don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, there's my mark, my witness mark, and I did center punch that too. And put a cap screw in there. And now that isn't going to move. We can go around and mark the other five then drill them and tap them and secure that everything is going to line up. I hope I'm not showing you too many details. If I am, you can just fast forward through them. But there we are. We've got the six holes uh, uh, drilled and tapped and deburred and blown out. And, and uh, now is the acid test here. We'll see if everything lines up. These are a quarter twenty cap screws. Quarter twenty eight make that. The reason for that is I just happen to have a box of them in stock. Otherwise I probably would have gone with the course. But you can see that uh, they all line up nice and we do need to make a gasket for this end, but I'll probably just use uh, a little blue silicone because this is not going to be hot and it's not going to develop be used with any pressure that amounts to anything, so it just uh, doesn't take too much, but there we go. Slicker than a whistle.
Now we're ready to begin the bottom side, or I might start on this next, I'm not sure. I drilled and tapped the holes on the other end, so both ends are done. And now I've drilled a hole clear through and reamed it half inch, and that's right on center. I took a half inch drill rod and it's fastened in there with Loctite so I can easily get it out of there simply by uh, heating it with a propane torch. It doesn't have to get real hot. Now I'm going to put it in a three jaw chuck and I'm going to face that. It's now mounted in the three jaw chuck and I'm going to face this and some of you are probably thinking why didn't you just mill that off in the first place. Well the reason for that is that I want perfect perpendicularity uh, with this hole so that when it oscillates on the other piece that it is truly going to uh, mate with that surface and I, I think this is the best method. Now we're going to have an extra hole here on the other side and that will be plugged with a piece of aluminum or it could be steel, Loctite it in there and we uh, do not have that great a pressure uh, that we need to worry about that ever coming out. So it's just going to be plugged. Now we're ready to turn the lathe on and face that. We're on our last pass and I'm feeding in. I seem to get a little bit better finish feeding in than feeding out. And uh, just about done facing this. I ran into some porosity in the casting, which I'm not real happy with, but I just have to live with it. Okay, I got this faced off and I told you I ran into some horrible porosity which I'm not happy with at all but it will not affect this uh, and you know I'm doing uh, this in my driveway and I'm not a chemist and uh, I'm going to try to start using some degasser to prevent uh, porosity but it's just something that I have not mastered and uh, uh, I'm not a master foundryman so you got to have live with some of the imperfections. I did plug this with a aluminum rod half inch and then uh, filed it off smooth so that's done and I'm gonna set this aside now for a while well one other thing I did fill a little sinkhole that I had here with uh, with Bondo and when that's painted that'll be as smooth as a baby's butt so oh and this hole is uh, been drilled and tapped so that when we put the uh, half inch rod in here that uh, I can lock it in that way. So that's a 5 16 set screw in there. Now I'm going to set this aside for a while and turn my uh, interest here into the uh, pedestal. And I've drawn that out. I'm no, I don't know if this is going to show up on cardboard. And that's what it's going to look like. I'm not real happy with the design, but I'm not a great designer, but that's that's kind of the way I do it. I don't have any dimensions. I just uh, build everything up on paper or cardboard, a couple different versions until I get kind of what I want. And this is going to have to be done in two pieces because the flask isn't long enough. So that's what you see here uh, where i got a splice there. And this is all just going to be built out of pine. That'll take several days. Now if I repeat myself on some of this uh, stuff that I'm telling you, it's because I'm doing this well, actually, it's because I'm 65 years old and I don't even know what day of the week it is, but I'm doing this over a period of many weeks and sometimes I forget what I might have told you. Now on to pattern making again. I'm not going to show the pattern making. The next one will be with the finished pattern and maybe even a finished casting. And that might be several weeks from now. One last thing on the cylinder. I just finished up drilling the two uh, steam holes or air holes here on the drill press and they're 3 16 diameter. I may have to open those up to quarter inch or slightly larger if that isn't enough air uh, to run the thing and those go all the way through. I don't think the whole the light's going to show up here but they, co they go into here and I am going to hone this out just a little bit with that cylinder hone that I showed you in the first video and then now I really am done with this for now.